because everybody understands what it's either too much of it or not enough of it or it's polluted or it's poisoned. But the, the research shows that over 90% of the American public has a relationship with water uh, and, and, and is concerned about, about uh, water. And <clears throat> having listened in on the congressional hearings from the agriculture department, the, the, the Republican Party has already lined up solid, solid opposition against anything climate change related. I mean, the, the co-leader, the, the, the leading member uh, in the House and the Senate both made comments saying uh, there will be no regulation, no initiative uh, that is focused that, that is focused on climate change. We're not going to deal and change our uh, agricultural system because of climate change. So water, and this is getting pretty technical here, but in order to fix water tables and to clean up water, and to protect aquifers and so on, you have to do the exact same things to regenerate your soil back to health as you do when you talk about climate change. Because you have to move carbon into the soil because carbon is the feedstock for the soil microbiome. And the soil microbiome is the root of life. Yeah? Because the, the, the bacteria and, 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 and uh, microorganism in the soil form the basics of life from which life then evolves into higher forms, right? So out of there come worms, then birds eat worms. And you know, so, so you have that, that whole chain of life building up from within the soil microbiome. And water is, is when, when, you, when you look around the country, uh, think about the damage uh, around the Gulf of Mexico, you know, along the coastlines of Florida, where you have dead zones and you know, thousands of dead fish on the beach. You, you have the same in Lake Erie, where the, uh, an entire city had to shut down their water filtration systems because they got all this sludge coming in uh, for, from algal pollution and so on. People don't link that the, the, the stuff coming down the Mississippi River Delta, which is the runoff from farms is causing this. And in virtually every community in America, there is some issue related to water. You know, either you have a pollution in your lake and you have all this algae growing there, you know, or like in, like in California, the farmers are sucking the aquifers dry and, and uh, pulling them so low that an entire city loses its water supply. So there are issues related to water. Um, so when so I found now the, the Sierra Club is this huge, I mean it's a four and a half million member organization, you know, very big bureaucracy. I mean, they have a significant multi-million dollar budget and so on, but it's it's quite quite rigid uh, in, in what they do. So I'm I'm I found uh, uh, a state chapter, you know, Illinois in this case, where uh, you know they're saying, let's go for it, let's do this. And they connected me locally to a farmer who is a Sierra Club member, the Commodity Corps, and to uh, the uh, leader of the local soil and water conservation district. And that lady got so excited about the idea, you know, of being able to communicate out the importance of focusing on water and repairing watersheds that she recruited the director of the Illinois Soil and Water Conservation Districts the association plus two senior level members from USDA who focused on the conservation component. And so now we have an amazing panel. We have two farmers, two activist farmers, commodity growers, and, we, and let me, let me uh, here's the latest uh, creative that we have um, developed. It's still, it's still in, in, uh, in uh, the rough format, but I finally I said, oh, I had to design it and I'm just paying for it. But uh, uh, we, we now have an opportunity to, to get into the farm bill. The farm bill spends hundreds of billions of dollars every year to influence the way that we farm, right? So, so the, the, the subsidies that are going into, into the farm sector are distorting the entire, the entire uh, industry. You know, the, the, the money goes into the support of commodity crops and commodity crops are, are raised as monocrops. And when you, when you put the same crop into the ground over and over, 
the soil dies because uh, it takes different the, the crop each crop takes different nutrients out of the soil and if you put the same soil the same crop in over and over then these the the soil by microbiome dies then you have to put in chemical fertilizers you know and and uh, like like synthetic nitrogen uh, phosphates and so on you know made uh, with fossil fuels and then you have to protect these crops because now the, the natural defenses in the soil have gone. So now you need uh, glyphosate, you know, and ever more toxic chemicals to defend against predation from insects and weeds. And then, the, and, and this is an arms race, which we're losing, obviously, because nature is, is building up defenses against these poisons. And so now we're dealing with neonoids and, and, and crazy stuff. And, and so the industry refuses to budge. Uh, the, the, uh, I mean, the, for, for example, right now, synthetic nitrogen is getting to be really expensive. It's made from natural gas or with natural gas. So they're using sewage sludge, which is the, the, the sewage from cities, right? Well, that stuff is full of toxins. Uh, the, and, and some of them are what they call forever chemicals uh, that are going into, that they're now using for fertilizer which then transfers into the crops, which then transfers into you know, our, our, uh, 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 our system and which we absorb. Yeah. And so the, the idea here is that there are, there are uh, when you look at the farm bill, it, man, it's like explaining the defense bill, it's crazy. You know? But there are basically three sections in the farm bill. One is uh, the, the commodity, the crop subsidies, where they're paying uh, to farmers to Grow specific crops and guarantee the price and you know, subsidize it. Then you have uh, nutritional assistance programs. Seventy-six percent of the farm bill is nutritional assistance programs. So they spend about two hundred billion dollars a year on SNAP benefits and school meals and that sort of thing. You know, and then the other then there is one component that's called the conservation programs. And those conservation programs are now dealing specifically with issues like pollinator protection, biodiversity, soil health, and so on and so on. But individually, these programs are not effective. You need to accumulate, you need to aggregate these programs so that the farmer can shift, you know, and, and repair his soil and structure his soil, which then at the same time disrupts the entire industry because when you, when you, are, when you are prioritizing soil health, that means you have to change the types of crops you're growing. Now you, you, because each crop, you can't grow the same crop in Florida as you do in California or in, in Oregon if you, want to, if you want to repair your soil and you don't treat soil as, as, base, as a base sand line. Yeah. And so the industry would have enormous costs to change their supply chain strategies and, and accommodate farmers uh, when, they, when they need to shift the European Union, for example, mandates three crops in rotation uh, so that, it, so that uh, the soil has time to recover between crop cycles and so on. So anyway, um, in this webinar, we want to have farmers explain, here's what I need to do to repair a watershed. If I was taking a dead piece of land where the soil is dead and I want to revive it, here's what I need to do. And then we have the government officials saying, okay, for this purpose, you can use this program and you add that program and, 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 and pull those things together and develop a three to five year plan. And so that's what we want to put on the table because all our volunteers, you know, we, we, are, we are talking about farm, but we, we, we don't have the specificity that you need you know, to, to know these five or six programs because then we can go and lobby Congress and, and, and ask for funding because these things are notoriously underfunded. And you know, when the Trump administration came in, the first thing they did was defund the commodity, the conservation programs. So anyway, that's sort of where I'm at. And, and I've, I haven't had time. Typically, I give myself three months to set up a webinar like this. And I've had only two months for whatever reason. And, and so I don't have enough time to really focus on the communications aspect of this webinar. Uh, 